He's here, he's here to give us the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Roy and Amy have donated, excuse me, Roy and Amy have, have devoted their entire life to singing evangelism. And they used to travel with a friend of ours, Lester Pratt, I, I'm sure the late Lester Pratt. And he was one of our, uh, I think, one of our greatest evangelists in the Florida Conference. This is a special service because following their presentation of several songs and a love offering to show our support, Roy will be bringing our morning message. Roy is an ordained minister and this marks his 60th year as a song evangelist. What, are you, what you're about to witness is not a performance, but it's a time of ministry and worship. Amen. Roy, welcome. Amen. Say praise the Lord. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by those nail-pierced hands than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin Way. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this whole world affords today. Jesus, than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true. The 
of time bring out the news another day is through someone slipped and fell was that someone you may have gone for added strength your courage to do not be disheartened, for I bring hope to you. It is no secret what God can do. What is done for others? You do for me.
beautiful song. He's a great singer. But we lost him several months back. How many of you remember the old favorite, What a Day, Glorious Day That Will Be? Do you remember that old song? Well, he wrote that song. But this one is just as good, if not even better. I appreciated our friend reading that scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. That is the theme of this great number. I wish I could do it justice. I cannot. But I shall try, for God so loved the world. As the Savior was walking up Calvary's hill,
Thank you so much for your kindness. I didn't say much about Amy, uh, but uh, I always tell people I'm proud of her. She's a good girl. She sings beautifully, and you just heard she plays beautifully. And she's pretty good looking too, I think. <laughs> so I'm proud of Amy. And uh, as young as she looks, you will find this hard to believe, but next month we will celebrate 44 years of marriage. I think that's a pretty good record right there. Amen. Yeah, she's been blessed with me for quite a while. <laughs> I asked her the other day, Will you still love me when I'm old and wrinkled? And she said, yes, I do. <laughs> Some of you will get that later on. <laughs> Somebody back there asked, are you going to preach or are you going to sing? I said, well, we'll do a little of both today. And they said, well, make sure you keep the singing long and the preaching short. But uh, we did a program uh, some time back, I forget just where it was, and I guess I got to preaching a little bit, and a couple women came out and said, I'm disappointed, we're disappointed in your program. Oh, no. I said, well, why? I said, she said, well, you preach too much. <laughs> they said, we come to hear Roy and Amy, we come to hear you sing, not preach. <laughs> but uh, if that is the sentiment of any of you here today. Well, that's just too bad. I want to preach anyway. I suppose we all have our favorite stories and experiences in the Bible. One of my favorites is uh, found in the book of Luke, the seventh chapter of the book of Luke, one of my favorite Bible experiences. And uh, here's the setting. Jesus was in town performing miracles. He had just healed the centurion's son. I believe he had just raised a man from the dead. And uh, word had gotten around that Jesus was in town. And you'll remember Simon the Pharisee decided that he was going to have Jesus home for a meal. Not because he wanted to show him any kind of kindness or graciousness. But he kind of wanted to check this young rabbi out. And so on that particular day, all the guests were there. And they didn't want to miss this young rabbi they'd heard so much about. So finally, Jesus came in. Simon didn't treat him like he treated all the others. No kiss of welcome didn't have the servants wash his feet or pour oil on him to refresh him. Simon just sort of said, come in, Rabbi, and sit down, and Jesus did. And while they were there, a most unusual thing happened. A woman who everyone knew as a sinner, a prostitute, came into Simon's home and ran up to Jesus. And in my mind's eye, I can see her as she fell at the feet of Jesus and perhaps grabbing him around the legs and she